For the first time in God knows how long, I'm genuinely excited for what's to come. On the channel over the last few days, we've been getting to know the new manager, Ange Postacoglu. We've been getting to know the new chief executive, Don Mackay, and it's been quite an exciting time. Today, we're going to have a slight diversion for you. We're going to take a look at a guy who looks like he could be the first major signing of the Ange Postacoglu and Don Mackay era. We're talking about Mario Vuskovic, the young Croatian defender who is 19 years old. Who is he? How close is the deal to happening and how would he fit into Celtic? That's what we're going to answer on today's video. Right, Croatian outlet Sportsgate Novosti reckon that Vuskovic to Celtic is a goer and could even be completed this week. They see he's on the verge of a move to Celtic for an initial fee of around £4.3 million, which could rise to around £5 million based on a couple of things. I think mainly uh, playing time for Vuskovic and also how Celtic get on next season, um, competition bonuses that kind of stuff. Celtic are reported to be very keen to get this done as soon as possible. Not really a surprise there, but that comes from the Croatian side of things. So it's encouraging at least that the club are trying to press on and bring in what would be a, a pretty key signing. Vuskovic could earn around 10 to 12,000 pounds per week at Celtic, which we reckon is about an eight or a nine fold increase on what he's currently on at Hadjik Split, his current club. There's been chat on this side of the water, there is water between here and Croatia, so that works. So it does seem like this could be a goer. But who is Mario Vuskovic? We touched on him rather briefly on a video I did last week, I think, alongside six or seven other players. Um, but we'll go a wee bit more in-depth now. I've tried to find out some basic information about him, looked at some stats, also tried to get a kind of feeling for the kind of player he is by searching his name on YouTube, wasn't quite as successful with that as I have been with previous players I've talked about on the channel, but we'll get to that in a second. First of all, the basic information, he is 19 years old, he turns 20 in a few months, he's six foot two, he was born in Split, he was raised in, no, that's kind of turning a bit British Navy there, and I wasn't really wanting to do that, but basically, he was born in Split and he's played football in Split and lived in Split his whole life. So this is going to be quite a big change if he does indeed come to Celtic. By the way, I should say, I know we're going to have folk in the comments below this video saying, oh, the deal's not been confirmed. What are you doing? Wait till it's confirmed and then do one of these videos. How about you lighten up, eh? So he started with RNK Split before moving to the much more well-known Hadjik split in 2016 when he was aged 14. Interestingly enough, Vuskovic was initially a midfielder. He was moved to the centre of defence when he reached that kind of teenage era, era, age. Not too many years before Christopher Ayer. There's certain similarities here between Vuskovic and Ayer, both of them starting out further up the park before being moved back, both of them sharing a lot of the same attributes, but again, we'll get on to that. Vuskovic made his first team debut at the start of the 2019-2020 season, but he found first team opportunities quite hard to come by under the former split manager, Darmir Buric. The next manager, Igor Tudor, gave him more of a chance, especially after some injuries about a year ago. It also coincided with this new manager coming in and playing three at the back, for which Vuskovic uh, was placed on the right-hand side, um, quite comfortable in that position. How will he fare with a back two or a back four? Um, it remains to be seen, but he is very comfortable on the ball. Last season was a big, big breakthrough year for Vuskovic. He played 29 times, scoring twice, and getting six yellow cards as Split finished fourth in the Croatian top flight, just missing out on a European spot. They did have the third best defensive record in the league, conceding 37 goals in 36 matches. Obviously, it's difficult to judge a centre-back on his team's defensive record because there's so many other factors there. How was the good was the goalkeeper? What style of play did the manager play? Obviously, more attacking teams are more likely to concede goals at the other end. So I'm not judging him on that goal-scoring um, against record, but it was the third best in the league 
not bad. Now this is where I would usually fire his name into YouTube and watch some clips of him to try and get a feeling for how he plays. Uh, I'm one who likes to use stats now and again, but I'm never someone who just relies on stats. I think it's important to actually see a player in action and get a feeling for him. That's the way football is to me. It'll never be a game of numbers. It'll be a game of opinions and a game of views. Having said that, there isn't a great deal of Vuskovic on YouTube. There's actually more... Um, about a young 14-year-old with the same name uh, at the same club as well. May well be a relation, I've not looked into that. Um, maybe it's a common name in Croatia. The stuff that there is of Vuskovic, which I think in total was about four or five minutes of clips, are of him doing attacking things. So one of them is him scoring a free kick, which is an absolute carbon copy of one Virgil van Dijk scored for us against Inverness at Hamden. He curled it in from the same angle, it hits the post the same way and goes into the net. It's an absolute carbon copy of that. There's also one of Vuskovic kind of the right hand corner of the 18 yard box doing a step over, cutting in on the left and then kind of putting a cross come shot that curls into the bottom corner. Again, a brilliant, brilliant goal. He scores a header in one of the clips as well, in a big game for them, a derby against Dinamo Zagreb. But it's not exactly a towering header. It just kind of hits his head and goes in. I mean, it's a good header, but it's not a towering header. He doesn't seem to be the kind of guy who will go and win a towering header. Six foot two is not exactly small, but it's a little bit shorter than Julian and Ayer. Um, I think Vuskovic will be viewed as an Ayer replacement. I think that's what Celtic are going for here. And in fairness, was Christopher Ayer really ever a towering presence. Um, very quick Ayer, very good on the ball. A decent defender, probably a good defender. But was he ever a guy who was going to, you know, win headers every single match? Did, did he ever really score many towering headers where he had a guy next to him and towered above him? Um, Julian's done that. Shane Duffy even did that last season. I don't think Ayer was ever that kind of player. So I don't think we should be too worried that Vuskovic isn't, especially if he's got other qualities, which we'll come on to. And we'll come on to them right now. The glaring qualities in Vuskovic's game is his ability on the ball. Now, he's a really good carrier of the ball. He has a habit of going up the right-hand flank, um, which is strange for a defender. He's not your normal defender. It probably comes from the fact he used to be a midfielder. But yeah, he goes up the right-hand flank, which is... Very different to Ayer. Ayer was obviously kind of left central. He would bomb up that area of the park. And Vuskovic is very much the opposite side, but further out wide, almost like a winger in some ways. Um, there are comparisons there with the likes of Ayer and Virgil van Dijk, his ability on the ball. He's a really good passer as well, from what I've seen. Will play balls in behind defences, can switch the play really well, which you would think would seem to suit Celtic because the vast majority of games we play domestically we will be in control of the ball and he will have the ability to be another attacking threat. The way Postacoglu's team plays he wants as many attacking threats on the pitch as possible. Players that can get fans off their seat and having a centre back doing it is pretty good if you're at home to uh, Dundee or um, what other team can I slag off here? Ross County or say Livingston. If you're away at Ibrox, away at Tynecastle, or away in the Europa League or even Champions League, then I think it's a different story. That's something I would be slightly concerned about. But as I say, I've not really seen a lot of footage of Vuskovic actually defending, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. The one thing I have read about him is that he's very quick, so if he does go up the park, he can get back in position. And in general, his positional play and his reading of the game is pretty good. Um, and just because he's a good attacker doesn't mean that we should be worried about him being a bad defender, if that makes sense. In 2018, The Guardian highlighted him as one of their 60 of the best young talents in world football born in 2001. It's not the catchiest title, I'll admit, but he was part of that elite list. I think Billy Gilmore was in there, and maybe Bukaya Sacco was in there, and a number of players were in there. But he's rated highly in Croatia, he is seen as one of the two leading defenders coming out of Croatia at the moment. Um, the other one, 
being uh, Josko Gvardiol, who moved to RB Leipzig last season. I think he actually then moved back to Dinamo Zagreb on loan last campaign. Um, Vuskovic is an under-21 international for Croatia. He's worked his way up, I think, from under-15 level, through the various levels, and the feeling is that he will get his chance to break into the Croatia national team in the coming years. They have... Quite an aging team, still good enough to beat Scotland pretty comprehensively last week. But if you think of the defenders in that team, the likes of Lovren, um, it is an aging team. And I think the next generation of Croatian talent is just around the corner, probably after Euro 2020. Celtic are clearly well aware of the Croatian market as well. We have been linked with so many players and they're all mainly defenders from the country in recent years. Obviously the big one we signed in 2015 was Jozo Simunovic. Easy to see comparisons between Simunovic and Vuskovic in terms of their standing in the game, maybe not the way they played uh, the game. Certainly Vuskovic is far more comfortable on the ball, far quicker. Um, but that was a signing Celtic made of a highly rated, highly promising Croatian defender. Another one we wanted a few years later was Filip Benkovic. He went to Leicester. Obviously, we then signed him on loan after that. Um, he's probably quite like Vuskovic, comfortable on the ball, a bit taller possibly. But this is clearly a part of the world Celtic are aware of and are aware of for defenders. I don't know if we've got a specific scout who likes defenders over there or we just think that's a cheap place that represents good value for money. Um, but it's clear Celtic have a long-standing relationship with that part of the world. I think this is an exciting signing. It's the kind of one we've needed to make for a few years. It's not a loan signing. It's going to be a permanent signing by the looks of things. And it's a youngster who can turn into a player that we could sell on for a lot of money if things go well. There's still some question marks. I think the big one is a 19-year-old who's lived his whole life in Croatia, moving to Scotland. How long would it take him to get up to speed when we probably need him to be a first-team regular from pretty much near the start, especially when Chris Julian's going to be injured, I think, for a wee bit longer. So there's question marks there. Obviously, I've touched on his... Defending, we don't know a great deal about that. But the guy seems an absolute talent. And if we can get him for upwards of 5 million, I think that's one to do, Celtic. It's promising. We just need more lads. Let's bring it on.